Good morning. Hi, everybody. It's Friday. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you guys, but I like to count down to Friday because I try to reserve my weekends for uh, my family. Um, I had Wynn with me a minute ago, and then we started having some technical difficulties. And so we're now trying to figure those out. She is rebooting her laptop. So you guys get just me for a minute while we're waiting for her to join. So if you'd pop in, by all means, let me know you're here uh, so I can see who's here. And we'll be ready for her when she's able to join. I'm sure she's coming. As she and I were having an amazing, awesome little chat and then technical difficulties happened. So, so ha, ha, who drinks their coffee? Black. Hi. Okay. I'm going to try to say your name. Olan Tunji. Olan Tunji. Is that right? Or did I butcher it? Good morning, love. Um, yes, Wynn is joining us, guys. She had, or we had, some technical difficulties, and so um, we're trying to figure out, she's trying to see if it was on her end because we lost sound <clears throat> on her side. So we are waiting for her. Ah, she's there. It's okay. I use my phone. Is that Yeah, funny? that's fine. Yeah, it's working great. Yes. My laptop is weird. Sorry. Yeah, I went ahead and went live so that I would, you know, go ahead and draw some traffic in. And yes. So, yeah, we were just waiting for you to work on that. So you got laptop issues? Yes. It's Friday. Of course. My laptop is like, <laughs> I am done. I'm ready for weekends. So, <laughs> yes. This is time. Time. It's time to stop working right now. Exactly. Got my morning mimosa ready. Oh, nice. <laughs> where um, where are you located, when? Austin, Texas. Ah, okay. Awesome. So it's only 9, 9 a.m.? Yes, 9 a.m. Yeah. I'm in the Atlanta, Georgia area, so we're only an hour apart. Oh, beautiful. I always yeah. want to visit. Well, you can come anytime. I have. This is my office is also my spare room. So there's two twin beds right here. Beautiful. Come visit. <laughs> All right, so tell us what you do when, okay, so when Zhang, right? <laughs> so hello, everybody. Um, you're really excited to be here. My name is Wen. You can think about my name as if not now, Wen. A um, little bit about my story. Um, I am born and raised in a small little mountain town in China. I, um, where I grew up is, you know, everybody, if you're a woman, you are supposed to be a housewife. You have a thousand kids when you're 21. That's just how the life is. And nobody ever left the town. In my hometown, you want to leave. It's about, you know, eight, 10 hours car ride around a mountain to visit an inner city. And mind you, my hometown, we don't have a car. So it's not. Oh, a, a wow. Simple. Neither do we have an internet. You know, Facebook, Google, YouTube is not available still today. So. You know, in that small little town, I just always have this feeling that I want to do something bigger out there for me. I don't know what that is. And I just wanted to leave. I want to go see the world. And that desire, that burning, burning, I cannot know what it is in my heart, uh, drive me forward. And that inspired me to have a cassette machine to teach myself English in four years. And that's how I came to America, started my American dream about 10 years ago. And you did a good job. Your English is awesome. Yay! Thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate you. So you you came to America, and how old were you? Uh, I was 21, 22, 21. Yeah, 20 or 21. And I'm going to ask a silly question, but given the restrictions and the difficulties of getting out of the town, how did you logistically get out of the town? I'm going to tell you. So... There's no one in my family ever go to college. No one ever left. So I don't really have people to ask. Neither is the internet. I can Google how to leave. I just remember. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little silly story first. When I was eight years old, I was behind my mom's bicycle. Uh, my mom biking to my grandma's house. I remember that night I looked up 
and I see this beautiful big moons, and she is following me everywhere. And that moment, I tell myself, "Wow, I must be special." The moon chills me. Moon follow me everywhere, oh, everywhere awesome. I go. And that's the reason I never tell that to anybody, not my mom, not my friends. I just keep it in my heart. I felt like, you know what? I must be special. Must be something out there for me. So that is where the idea come from. And yes, I did not know where to go or where to go, but I just keep searching. So this one time, um, I, I was very, very lucky. One of my best friends, she did not go to college. Instead, she had a, a job in like a big city. So I took a motorcycle, a bus, a train, and a flight. After a day, I arrived in the big city to visit her. And you know, she wanted to show me around and all that. And I remember that day what i admire the most is not all the high rises all the beautiful city and buildings i really in, in i really was shocked when i saw in this huge library there are five storage and mind you my hometown is like the library is more like this size and they are no they're just textbook there's nothing else yeah. in terms of information so i was lost in that five-story library I felt like wow this is awesome all those information are free for me to access this is amazing <laughs> and that's how i discovered english as a second language a session where i thought you know what this is interesting at the time i did not know what that means or what that possible possibility is for the future but in my mind i'm thinking you know what i am no any other path right now i might want to try something new that's really how i get an idea so i got this stack of book on my back of my shoulder come back home and that's how i start my uh, along with the cassette machine too that's how i start my journey and that's how i teach myself english by listening to the, the cassette and the book and you ask me logistically how did it work it really you know, at the time, I have this big desire. I did not know how to get there at all. Nobody can tell me what and when and how. But in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? Moon choose me. Moon gonna guide me in a way. So I'm gonna put one step, one thing ahead, one day at a time. So literally how it work is, um, I first will make a fancy schedule. I get up every day, six o'clock. I will, you know, read 10 vocabulary. I will listen. I will make a Chinese sound, make it sound, make sense. Because for example, if I learn this name, Michael or Rachel, even this name, it made, it sounds just like a weird sound for me. Doesn't make yeah, any sense, right? Sure, yeah, I yeah. never watch a show or anything like that. So I cannot tell. Anyhow, um, in order to come to America, I later learned I had to take an English test which is called TOEFL. So I thought, you know what, that's cool, but how? My hometown is so small. So I um, had to did a, do the motorcycle, a bus, and a couple hours train, like a day, get to a big city. I had to stay over for the hotel, uh, for overnight. And by the way, there's no hotel.com. So I had to go to the hotel, <laughs> not the excuse me. Miss, do you guys have any availability? Do we should no, I'm sorry. Oh yes. So I had that like a whole day struggle. And I will stay there overnight. And second day I will take this exam from eight to twelve, four hours, nonstop. Mm -hmm. And that's how I get my exam done the first time. And when I said um when I said I was to start my journey, I was very optimistic. I said, you know what? God damn it. Eight months in this like very, very rigorous uh, schedule. I got it. I'm probably rocking the world right now. I'm so good. Nobody around me speak any language but me. So I must be the best. So I go there. I just would like to do all the things I mentioned, the motorcycle, the bus, the train, get there, knock on the door, get the hotel, stay. My first score was 89 out of 120 as a total score. Okay. So let's get to the benchmark. The good score is 100. 100 is like, a, you know, the minimum to go get to a great, great university. Right. My, I'm thinking, you know what? Damn it. I'm not 100 yet. But hey, this is a great start. <laughs> A good no start. one in my hometown know to speak anything but the local language. So I'm pretty cool. Let me give myself another three months. Let's give another shot, right? I can learn so much from it. So I do exactly that. I go home. I do all those, you know, like I like really like, oh my God, this is so serious. I can three months. Nobody talk to me. I wake up six o'clock. I do my thing. Three months in, um, I come back a bus, a motorcycle, a train, a hotel, <laughs> got there. My second exam was, my second result was 88 out of 120. And I walked to the exam center, I'm thinking, darn it, this is not the direction I wanted to go. Right. 
But I thought to myself, you know what? People say third time is a charm, right? Second time, I'm still new. I'm still learning this thing. I don't know what's happening. It's all good. So I do exactly that. I go back this time. I'm like, I'm that serious. I can do another four months in another trial. My third score、uh, result was eighty-seven out of one twenty. Oh my gosh! My fourth exam result was eighty-eight out of one twenty. My fifth time was eighty-nine out of one twenty, and this process stretched for you know three years. And I remember、wow. the day I walk out of the exam center the fifth time. I remember I give my mom a call, and tell her what happened, and tell her there's nothing I can do. I I don't know what to fix, where to fix. I probably just meant to be home, be that little small town girl. I don't know what else can I do, and that was very sad. Yeah. So I went home. I cry. I do my thing. But I thought to myself, you know what? God damn it! The moon is watching me. I knew it's ha- something is happening, but I just have not had my break yet. I had to keep going. So I learned. I want to pivot. I don't have good luck in this exam. It's another exam called、uh, GRE, which G, like GMAT is not master degree kind of、uh, exam. So you know what? Let's give that exam a try. That sounds like a lot easier to undertake. So I did exactly that. I got another fancy book, but less of it. This time I got nine months dedicated, and this time I'm not joking. Every day, eight to ten hours. That's my serious like schedule. I wake up before I even pee. I will learn a few <laughs> words so I can really let it in my subconscious mind, and I will repeat that before I go to bed. I have this like I will、uh, tear my book in the small pieces when I wait in line, when I go to bathroom, wait, like waiting. I will just make sure every second is count. I. This time, like really determined. This is has been my big break. I have to make it because Moon is watching me. Like I'm, like I, I need to deliver. So <laughs> I did exactly that. But in our today's exam, I later learned that I have to go to a big city, not even big, but even having that availability to register exam, I actually have to go to a new country, Malaysia. In that case, oh,、And、okay. Time, In my hometown, just so you know, nobody ever left, so no one really know what passport is. So I go to the <laughs> police office, you know, feeling so fancy, got my passport in. I feeling like, damn, I'm on top of my world, walking around with my passport. Nobody know where it is. So pumped. So just so you know, the the day before I go to the exam, really excited. I think this is my big break. So I will do my uh the scooter, the motorcycle, and. Uh, the the train, the bus, a flight to a bigger airport, and to wait for my, another flight to a the big country that I wanted to go. I remember when I got to that airport, you know, after you know, I don't know, ten, twelve hours, whatever. Um, I sat in the airport, and I was like, "Damn, this is international terminal. This is <laughs> I'm so fancy. I'm like one of those international people, you know." Like I never see this terminal before, and you walk around, you see those like be- people who are so fancy with their suit, with their jacket, with their like their consultant, they are like banker, they all like fancy. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, this is awesome. I am one of them. Once I get there, I get my exam, I get my big break. My mom is watching me. I want to crush this. So that is the best four hours daydream right there in that terminal by the bench. So the moment when I'm about to get on my flight to get to my、uh, big exams, the flight attendant told me, "Excuse me, miss.、Um, I'm sorry, you can't get on the plane." And I said, "I'm sorry, what? Like I got my, all my documents. My exam is tomorrow. I I will like. What do you mean?、Uh, this is my passport. Everything." She was like, "You know, I'm sorry, miss. You don't have the paperwork named visa." And I was like, "God damn it! What does this word mean? Like, I got my passport. Do you not understand? This is my exam. I will come back tomorrow. Like, I won't. I what? I was begging her. I was, I was, I. I yeah, was, I, can... I don't know what to. And I remember, I was remember like, I, I sat and I sat back to the bench and I saw the flight just took over over my oh, head. Oh my gosh.、Me. And I sat there. I just felt a moment. Maybe I'm not going up. Maybe all the signs from universe telling me, "God damn it, you are meant to go back to your little town. That's who you were. You're supposed to be." 
and I I just don't know what else can I do. Yeah. So I left. I went home. I cry and I cry and I cry and I cry. Three straight days, not eating, not drinking. So surprised I did not die yeah. from dehy- dehydration. No. But I thought to myself, God damn it. I still waiting for my bed break. I, I'm not done yet. At this point, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so, I'm, I am failed one after another, after another, after another. So what? At this point, I have nothing else to lose. And I thought, no one's still watching me. I got to give it one more shot. I can't just let go at this point. It's been, I have to make it. I have to give it one more shot. I just need to wait for my moment. So I got my DM visa in the next two months. I give another one month, so totally three months preparation. In 2010, December, I was on my way to Malaysia. I got an almost perfect score in my in my exams. And that is how I nice. got the following fall to start my American dream. So that's, yes. right. that's how it happened. And the moon followed you here. <laughs> Moon follows me everywhere. Whenever yes, it does. I felt lost, I felt <laughs> I don't know if I have one more push. If I I don't know if I got this, whatever personal professional, I just look up when I see the moon. I just knew. Yeah, I got this. You got tears in my eyes. <laughs> what an amazing story, love. What an amazing story. All right. Thank you. What once you got to America, what are you doing? What what impact are you trying to have on others? What are you what's your business? Beautiful question. So when I come to America, long story short, um, I get my first master degree in marketing and I joined the startup world for five years, co-found the business, failed, joined another startup, leading the entire uh, Asian division, doing all sorts of things that startup need. Another two years, I have such a great time feeling I live in a dream. As you know, all the entrepreneurs watching, if you, you know, you're a small company, you feel like, damn, I'm crushing it, I'm making impact, this is awesome. But at that point, you know, about five years in the startup world, I'm thinking, this is cool, but I want to see an even bigger world. How can this business work in the global level? And at that point, I started thinking about my original dream. I always said I want to go see the world. I realized seeing the world is not just by traveling, not just to go to a new country. It's about seeing different sides of things. It's about small business, big business. It's about meeting people from Illinois, meeting people from Atlanta, meeting people all around the world, learning the culture, learning different perspective. That is what I want. So I go to, I decided to go to, uh, get a um, business school degree. So I get to Duke, um, that was 2016 for my MBA. And afterwards I was part, I joined uh, Dell for the marketing strategy. Um, I managed their 320 million yearly portfolio, um, how I execute the strategy, which is fantastic. Two years later, I started to realize, sorry, this is a lot condensed story. Two years later, it's I realized, okay. you know what? There's so much, there's so much. I just felt this drive from my mom. I felt there's so much bigger thing out there for me, as great as what my trajectory was. Yes. Conventional uh, conventional wisdom about, you know, doing a startup, get an MBA, get a big company, it's all great. And I enjoy everything I come along and I just start looking, realize, you know what? I look pretty, I dress pretty, I go to work, it's all great. But there's something bigger out there. There's something mm-hmm. that, that that feeling that itch comes back. Oh yeah. Like, what is that? And it's a little truck. You know, this year has been beautiful. It is it is challenging for many cases, but in in, in my sense, I felt gave me a lot of time to reflect who am I, what I really want. And I keep thinking yes. about my mom is calling me. It's something bigger out there. And I start realizing, you know what, what really, really um made my heart swell is really want to make a make a world a better place. I thought I come this far. I am so so damn lucky to be the only one person left my town. I, I thought I own it to the world to impact, to support others, to help to help them do exactly that. I made my dream come true. I want to help others make their dream come true. Mm-hmm. So this year, uh, my husband and I, we started a business called Evergreener. So we are selling, a, it's like a, a gold calendar. So our vision is we want to create a world where no dream is left unfulfilled. We want to make sure, uh, provide um, individuals with a framework, with a 
processes to really set the goal every year, every month, and really looking at the goal, things are from the mind, the body, the wealth, three aspects, and mm -hmm. really hold yourself accountable, you know, by taking the daily action. And at the end of the day, it's about, it's not even about the things you have or job you get promoted or the money or all that. It's about yep. who you're becoming. And that just really excites me this year. You know, me and my husband, we started this business. You know, it's been a fun, fun journey. Uh, in, the, in, the, in addition to that, I also start my podcast. It's called If Not Now When. I love it. I love it. I love it. When I saw that in your bio you sent me, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Because I want uh, to share entrepreneur stories. I love to share um, people's story, um, you, know, you know, all the things behind the scene. You know, how do they make things, make impossible possible? What is the up? What is the down? What, how do they pivot? How can they really make the difficult time magical? And I believe, I, my intention is, I want to use the podcast as a way to inspire. I want to inspire others also move forward with their own goal and dream. It's maybe they will say, you know what? God damn it. I, if I, if Rachel can do that, I can start working out tomorrow, or I can run a train for a marathon tomorrow, or I can start eating better tomorrow. It's whatever goal and dream that you have. That's what has to be entrepreneur. It could be anything that made you scared, that you feel like a little, little itch in your heart. You want to do it, but a little bit scared. And that is what I wanted to do. So I think for me, like I want to empower um, people to really go after their dream. In my mind, I think if every one of us is an individual, it's like a light bulb. If you are, can be one pixel brighter, the whole world collectively is a better, brighter place together. And if we, we all are so different, and yet we are so the same. We all want to be happy. We all want to have you know beautiful, wonderful life with people that we love, we share, we enjoy. So I really want to, you know, encourage people to really having that courage, having that, having that ability to go after what it really want instead of living the life what people expect them to do yeah are you doing coaching too as well oh, you... yes yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that same time as well i also have mindset coach i want to support entrepreneurs exactly do that especially in female entrepreneurs i want to mm -hmm. help them to really see the big picture really go after the big goal that scares them and make it happen I love it. Love it. That is, uh, that is wonderful. Amazing. I, you know, we, we, in the U S we take all that for granted, right? Those big libraries, those, the opportunity to go from one city to the next, uh, the cars, the everything we take it all for granted. Um, sorry. He's a little bit needy. <laughs> oh, so yeah. And, um, so yeah, to hear that story, we need to hear more of that. Thank we, you. Because when when we look at when we look at the situations that we have, it's really pathetic in many cases because we don't make anything happen simply because it's already all here, right? So when you've got you've got to push through like you did. And, you, and we hear those stories. It's like, why are, why are we just sitting here and not taking advantage of all of the amazing opportunities that are literally right outside our door? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. You know, I'm I'm really grateful. I'm really, I felt, I felt so lucky. I'm so grateful to come this far. I really did not anticipate anything at all. And I just felt the mom must be watching me. Otherwise, yeah. I'm, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I love it. And I'm thinking, you know, every single day, doesn't matter how, you know, I've been American now, I've been a decade now, I still felt every single day I feel like I'm living my American dream fresh and new. <laughs> every day I'm thinking about how lucky I am and how can I, you know, relate now is time for me to contribute and helping others to do exactly that because I felt almost like I own it to the world. Think about yeah. how many people in the whole universe today uh, don't have, you know, basic in uh, access to internet, the clothes, yeah. the food, and yet we have all the information, the technology yes. right in front of us. It's almost our responsibility to step up to make this world a better place for our own way, whether for you, you are the fantastic stay home mom, or you are the great bakery uh, baker, or you are a wonderful executive. What 
whatever the company is the, whatever made your heart take whatever you, you want yes yes and you do what made you happy made you joy and that's how the world world become a better place collectively together and that's how we really change um change life change perspective and really connect all of us together yeah yep it's beautiful so did you meet your husband in the u.s when you came or did you did he travel with you i mean how did that happen <laughs> Uh, great question. Um, I actually met my uh, my husband in uh, Illinois um, in the library actually. So oh, I worked this. I was you know I was there with my best friend. You know she loved to study, and I love to hang out with her. So I was just in the library sometimes taking some selfie and just having my great time. And okay. one day, my husband uh, at the time is her classmate come by to follow her homework to uh, copy. He's not a good student. So I met him. I said, hey, hi, how are you, bro, bro? And I learned that he he not only lived right next to a grocery store, he also have a car. I said, great. <laughs> you know what? I don't have a car. I'm an international student. And that's before Uber or Lyft, all that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. it will be helpful. Can, can you give me a lift? Can you give me a ride? And he's like, all those American people will be like, yeah, sure. Like, let's go at lunch. Yeah, sure. Like, uh -huh. like. <laughs> like small talk, like we did not even exchange phone number or anything. So we yeah. say bye, and three days later, it's Friday, which is my grocery time. Like I, I don't party. I'm really there study, and I, I don't. Yeah. So Friday is my grocery shopping time. I was like so excited, right? And I think about you know what, this guy that I met. So I asked my friend, hey, what is his phone number? My friend is like, oh, this is not good. You as a woman, you should not like copy. I said, no, no, no. I got this, and she gave him <laughs> his phone number reluctantly. I went there, I call, I say, hey, hey, uh, where are I'm downstairs. And he on the phone, he was like, hey, what? Who, who are you? <laughs> I said, oh, hey, the Asian chick that you met in the library, you know, a week ago, remember? You told me you can help me with the grocery shopping. I'm right <laughs> up, uh, downstairs. You live right there, right? It's very close. Just come. <laughs> and <laughs> I hear this dead 10 second silence. Uh huh. He said, Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> he probably was like, what is happening? But yes. Okay. And that's how we became a friendship. So we meet each other about 10 minutes every week because it's a short ride. So 10 minutes, you give me a ride every week. I don't think he ever can get out of it because I keep asking. And uh -huh. that's how we began our friendship. And that's how we are happily married seven years today. That's awesome. Your persistence is just amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't give up. The, the no. Life is so short. I only live once. I might That's die right. tomorrow. Yeah. You're my, right. My, my, my biggest, not fear, but my biggest, I, I, I always ask myself if today is my last day, would I be okay with that? And I don't have any control about if I walk out, I'll be hit by the bus or something happened to me. Mm -hmm. But I tell myself if today I can say I live it, give it my best, it's yeah. all good. It's I, all good. Yep, yeah, you're right. All good. Oh my gosh. I want to be your best bud. Can we like hang out? You got to come yes. see us. Yes. <laughs> like I mentioned, your I energy is you. just so contagious and wonderful. And I want to, I want more. I want more. All right. I love. I love you so much for saying that. I really appreciate you. Appreciate this opportunity for me to share my story. Of I feel course. so honored. I really hope this can serve as a little bit, you know, support yeah. for others who may be in a challenging time, like we all did. So I really want to, you know, thank you for your wonderful, beautiful heart and what you do here is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have um, one of the things we do at the end of these is we provide like just a little tip or something like that for entrepreneurs. Oh boy, here goes the chicken. Um, <laughs> uh, a little tip or something. So what have you got? You know, I will say you entrepreneurs, you have, of course, have a big dream, a big, big vision you go after. And inevitably, you know, we are gonna get tested from times, right? There are gonna be mm -hmm. time you're gonna fail because if it's a worth goal, you're gonna be failed regardless. And the failure truly is a stepping stone to help you get it, which you all know that. But emotionally, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. I guess what I wanna tell you is, ladies, don't ever give up. Don't ever let 
the universe sends you the no, whatever that's confused, you feel like, you know, am I not good enough for this thing? No, yes, you are. If you can think about that as you go, you can have, you have all the ability to make it happen. And guess what? If you don't believe in yourself, nobody will. So step up. If you fail today, eat some ice cream if you need it, get it back to tomorrow. It's all good. Just don't ever give up. If you don't give up, you never fail. You only fail when you give up. Yes, and if you get an 88 again, just try another time. I love it because the moon is always with you and the moon absolutely cares. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. So here, what's going to happen if, if anyone has any questions for when you want to know more about her story, you want to know what she's doing, you need to post your link to your calendar, which I think is actually in the post from yesterday, but post it in the comments too. Okay. Um, that way people can go check out the website and see what, what's there. I'm definitely going to do that. I haven't done that yet. And then um, if anyone has any questions, they can post it in the comments. If you'll just check back and make sure you guys tag when in the comments also if you have a question so that she'll know. But yeah, no, this was amazing. An incredible way for me to start my Friday, my weekend. And we will be in touch again because I got to get more of that when energy. Yes. Now, when check out her podcast, <laughs> you guys, you need to share that too. When share everything in the comments. You are the best. I really appreciate you. And thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you have a magical Friday and let's make dream happen. Absolutely. Absolutely.